My name is Sean Chandler, and I'm from Sean Chandler Talks About on YouTube. Awesome. And so with this film, one of the things I really enjoyed about it is how on the surface, it's this horror thriller, but the deeper you dive in, suddenly it's fantasy, and yes. then Irish lore is blended yes. in there. What made you to decide to adapt a book that is kind of this genre blender as your directorial debut? I mean, I think it was exactly that. I think I enjoy um, those particular genres and all of the kind of rich mythology and world building around it. Um, but I thought it was such a cool choice that the author made to kind of start out as this really accessible kind of tense thriller to take you into an unexpected larger world. Um, and so that felt really, really compelling and smart to me that it was like coming from a very grounded place and then moves to a much more uh, surreal place. Okay, it's almost like that's the rapper and yes. there's that sweet core to it is the all the rich lore that yeah. you get to explore with him. Yeah. So with the, Dakota Fanning's character, so much of it, she's wrestling with how she sees herself. Yeah. And then the movie's filled with this imagery mm -hmm. of seeing reflections of herself and yeah. broken reflections of herself. How much of that imagery and symbolism was in the book and how much of that was added in adapting to a visual medium? Yeah. I mean, I think that was somewhat embedded in the high concept of the movie where there is this, um, of the book, sorry, where there's this like large window that becomes a mirror. Um, and it felt like it was very deftly addressing that thing of that this, this story was about a character kind of learning to face themselves and learning to see the darker parts of themselves and be okay with that. Um, and then obviously as a filmmaker, I just kind of wanted to go harder with that idea. And so it very much became about uh, picking images that had this kind of like duality in it so that you're constantly reminded um, of the two sides of, of Mina's self and that she's kind of confronting that. How much of the story changed and evolved from like the first draft yeah. <laughs> to the film that we're watching? Uh, hugely. I mean, I think uh, for me as a writer, I kind of go crazy and I love to invent and then reinvent. I think I had like 30 drafts and they're all incredibly different. Um, and yeah, for me, the first draft was very much like throwing colors at the wall and just kind of taking from the essence of the book. And then as I got uh, further along in the process, kind of honing in on uh, a bit more precision of like what those structural things were and play, moving things around. So it was a very much a, a kind of fluid, chaotic process for me and then becomes about kind of a carving at the very end. Somewhat to that point, yeah. the movie is kind of a series of mysteries yes. and revelations yeah. in kind of crafting it. How did yeah. you decide when we sh you should reveal each piece of the lore and answer each question? I think it was really just kind of trial and error for me writing different versions of the script and then doing the same thing in the edit, um, seeing how much we could get away with not saying and uh, finding the places where we either needed to add a little bit or take out a little bit. But it was just that thing of, of kind of doing it and then watching it and feeling um, feeling if the tension was enough. And, and the yeah, the idea throughout the process was very much to have something that like holds you the whole time. It doesn't let you go and just keeps you kind of guessing and uneasy throughout the whole movie. So even as watching it, yeah. every time there was an answer, yeah. then there was a new question yes. raised. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> Thank you. So your father's legendary director and yeah. a producer on the film. Yeah. What did that look like? How did he support you <laughs> in bringing your vision to the screen? He supported me in so many ways. I mean, I think the the um, kind of initial thought was just sort of do something that feels like as much you as possible. That was sort of the advice imparted upon me. Um, and so I did that. I think the the kind of whole thing for me, the journey was really wanted to make him proud and wanted him to feel, um, yeah, good about what I what I made uh, while still kind of carving my own space as as uh, this creative and trying to uh, play with like where where our tastes differ and and are similar. So it was very much that just like us talking about those things, me going to him for advice. Uh, when I didn't know how to move forward. And he's just, yeah, been a wonderful mentor. So several of your father's films are very special to me. Are Which of his films are special to you? I think all of them, um, but I, the kind of main ones for me, Lady in the Water is like uh, the one I connect to the most, uh, the village as well. So those two are, are kind of like hugely, uh, huge parts, parts of my life, I think. 
And I always love to introduce people to one of my favorite films. It's like a hidden gem. What's a movie that you love to recommend to people and introduce them to? Mm. It kind of depends on what I'm watching uh, at the moment. I think there's this like one movie that changed my life. It's a fast bender movie called um, uh, Ali Fear Eats the Soul. And it's like one I watched in college and I love it. I think it just is um, this movie that shows what's possible with visual language and has this like immense kind of uh, color palette and texture palette. So I always love to sort of watch that with people and tell them to watch. I think it's hugely inspiring. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for your you. time. <laughs>